right, scientists say they have finally done it. They have proven that humans can actually see into the future for about a tenth of a second. But <laughs> even though a tenth of a second seems like nothing, the time lapse is actually what allows us to do everything from catch a fly ball to maneuver through a crowd on a busy street. Mark Changizi is a professor at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. That's in Troy, New York. Professor, good morning to you. Uh, good morning there, Bill. Uh, so we get a glimpse of events a tenth of a second before they occur. Why is that significant? Well, it's, it's not that we perceive it before it occurs. We really want to perceive it when it occurs. And the, the problem for an animal is that what an animal would like is that light hits your eye and immediately you have a perception of what's out there. Uh, so the you, you've, it, you've got the, the problem is what? I'm sorry, go ahead. But the problem is it takes a little while for, for your brain to create a perception. So if you just created a perception of what was out there, you'd have a, a perception of the way the world was a little while ago. So what the brain instead tries to do is guess what the world will be like by the time the perception actually okay, occurs I, I, in the I brain. Finally there. I know you've got a TV in front of you. Let's go and put up an image here. Tell us what is important about this, Professor. Um, is this the, uh, the radial display illusion? Yes, there yes, are nine yes. squares, and you see the spokes coming out of the middle? Right. So now, in this case, the, the idea is that usually when you encounter all of those radial lines, it's because you're moving forward in the world, like on Star Trek, when they suddenly go into warp, on your, on, and you get all the stars going outwards. In real life, when you're moving forward, on your, on your eye, you actually have these little optic blurs. So when, your eye, when you look at that screen, your, your visual system says, well, I may be, I'm actually moving forward towards the center. And what you, your brain does is say, let's not create a perception of the way those squares actually are. And in fact, they're truly square. Create a perception of the way they will be in just a moment when I've moved forward a little bit towards the middle. Okay, I follow you there. Case, it, advance the image one time and tell us what we should be seeing here then, Professor. Let's see. So this is now the uh, called the bulging grid illusion. Um, and this is by Foster Nostler, not mine. But if you loom your head towards the screen, everybody, you, it just fixes look at one of the squares and loom your head towards it, the, the, the checkerboard will bulge towards you and distort yeah, I see in that. a way sure. similar to just the image that you saw in the previous one. You'll get the same kinds of illusions, but now you're, you're actually moving towards it, where in the previous one, you didn't have to move toward it because those radial lines were tricking your brain into thinking that you were moving forward. I got you. Quickly, let's go to the next one here. What is this? Now, this one is a old, a stu uh, from a student of mine some years ago named David Witters. If you, now, if you loom towards the middle, fixate on that little Look at that little black dot, but move much more small head movements towards it. You'll see that um, if you get it maybe a little close. Yeah, well, we're there. Keep going. Yeah. You should see yeah, the studio it, right now. Right. So it, it, it moves outwards faster than it should. The idea is that that blur is suggesting that they're moving faster and that even small motion movements lead to it actually going much farther than it should because your brain is thinking it's going faster than uh, it should. I got you. Okay, come out on camera right now here. We, we, I think we've mastered that so far. Now, practically speaking, the reason why this applies, if you're playing baseball, right, fly ball coming into your mitt, you now teach your hand where to go to catch that ball before that ball smacks you in the face, right? Right. You want to, you want to be able to see the ball where it truly is at, time, at any given time, not where it was a tenth of a second before. Uh, okay, here's another example. Say you're three years old, right? You trip over that broomstick and you bust your face on the floor. The next time you see that broomstick, do you avoid it? Um, <laughs> no, because daddy's placed something uh, hiding it. Um, no, uh, uh, perhaps, yeah. <laughs> perhaps. We'll take a perhaps from a professor. Thank you, Sarah, for coming in. One-tenth of a second is all you need. All right, I didn't